what's going on today YouTube so I'm going to tell you about five things that well you should know before you buy a 370z um, this is my 2014 Nissan 370z right here um, it is a sport package car but it is a base so it doesn't have any of the touring options um, doesn't have the, the leather and suede seats doesn't have the Bose audio but uh, with the sport package, I get the upgraded brakes. Um, you get the sport rays, which I still have those. I upgraded to these uh, Z1 wheels. I can tell you about those another time. Um, and then you also get the rev matching among some other different things. So we'll get and start this off with number one, and that is going to be visibility. Um, so as you can see, there are some rear quarter windows, but when you get inside, you actually can't even see them. The headrests actually block them. You can't see out either of them. Um, why they put those in here, I'm not really sh too sure, but um, but yeah, uh, you have to rely on your mirrors and your side windows quite a bit, but um, there are a lot of blind spots in this car. Um, and you, you kind of have to make sure you double and triple check before changing lanes or turning, you know, just to make sure that you don't, uh, hurt anybody <laughs> or uh or hit anybody anything like that um but yeah visibility um i've owned over and i stopped counting i think somewhere after 40 um so over 40 cars um and this one is not quite as bad as a corvette but it is still pretty bad um you definitely you definitely need to be aware of that um especially uh taller people um, I'm 6'2". You definitely want to definitely want to make sure that you're comfortable driving the car because if not, you're not going to be happy driving the car. So next on the list, we're going to come around to the front of the car. Um, and I'm going to tell you about how low this thing is from the factory. I don't know the actual factory specs, but it's, it's pretty low. Um, I, I, I'm stock height. I don't have any suspension modifications. Um, and yeah, I, I still bottom out on, uh, pulling in the driveway. So you definitely have to be careful. You know, sometimes you got to pull in sideways, you know, just to make sure that you don't damage your, uh, damage your front bumper or anything like that. Um, but yeah, you definitely kind of want to be aware of, you know, those things, speed bumps too. Um, speed bumps are kind of a big deal. Um, I bottomed out the middle of the car over some speed bumps. So um, another thing, you know, if you if you live in an area with a bunch of potholes, you want to be aware of that as well. So just uh, just be careful. Um, it's it is a sports car. It is going to be low. Um, you just need to make sure that you know how to avoid, you know, damaging your car and being able to um, avoid and overcome those obstacles. So stepping into the car for number three, we have gas mileage. This car has absolutely horrendous gas mileage. Um, it is a V6, and I think I average around 18 miles per gallon. Um, I don't drive the car very hard, um, pretty tame most of the time. Um, most of my driving is a mix of city and highway, uh, but even still, you know, if, if gas is, um, is factored into your budget quite a bit, well, fuel in general, um, you may want to, you may want to make sure that this is going to be the car for you. Um, here, let me, let me turn the car on here. I'll show you what it says my gas mileage is. Come on. There we go. Uh, 18.1 miles per gallon. Uh, yeah, so that that's kind of bad. Uh, it's kind of bad in the sense that, oh, oh, now we got beeping going on. Let me shut the door here. It's kind of bad in the sense that I've had several V8 cars that don't even have this bad of gas mileage. Um, but you know, it is what it is. The CTSV that I had had um, it only got, I think, 12 or 13 miles per gallon with the same driving. 
So, you know, it could always be worse, but it could definitely be better. All right, so number four on the list is how rare the manual transmission is for these cars. Um, almost every single one that you see is going to be an automatic. Um, even more rare is the sport package with the manual um, to give you all of the uh, all of the sport and track goodies. Um, and then the the sport touring is even uh, even harder to find. I was only able to find this one locally, um, but manual was a must. Um, and then sport package was a must. I really, really, really wanted the um, the touring instead of the base because I, I enjoy my audio. But you know, it's easily upgraded. Uh, it wasn't that big a deal, and I plan to swap these seats out eventually, anyways. So um, it wasn't it wasn't as hard of a decision for me. The biggest thing was the manual and sport package for me. But uh, yeah, manuals are extremely rare for these cars, apparently. Um, 350 easy. I feel like you can find a manual all day long, but the 370 is just so much harder to find. Um, I'm assuming because they produced a lot less of them. Uh, I don't know exactly how many they produced, you know, compared to how many automatics. Um, if automatic is your thing, you know, totally go for it. You know, you're going to enjoy the car either way. Um, but, uh, but if you are dead set on manual like I was, you're probably going to be searching for a little bit. So last but not least, I want to show you the seats in this car. Um, and obviously mine are the base seats, which is what you're gonna find in a lot of these. But there's something kind of different about them. They're, they're pretty comfortable, not gonna, not gonna deny that. But um, look at the headrest. So the headrest moves, and I don't know if I can show that on camera very well, but when you push back on the headrest like if you lean your head back it pushes into the back of the seat right in here um, I don't know why that is and this is not the only uh, car I've seen do this um, I've I test drove a couple other 370s they all did the same thing which is so weird as soon as you lay your head back um, you, you kind of feel it poking you in the back um, I think it's just you know the cheap materials um, but yeah, certain, certainly um, an odd thing for the car to do, um, especially if you kind of lay your head back as you're driving, you know, if you have a long drive and you just kind of want to relax. It's not the most comfortable when you do that, but, uh, but nonetheless, you know, if you kind of drive in an upright position, um, you know, focus with your head on the road a little bit more forward, um, it's not an issue. It's, it's a non-issue. But uh, but yeah, so all in all, I think those are the five biggest things that you would need to know before buying this car. Um, now, we can talk in terms of reliability. They are generally pretty reliable. Um, I'll do a separate video on some of the issues these cars have and what to look out for. But uh, aside from that, this is more of just a more of just an introduction to the car and you know what some other maybe what what some other youtubers maybe won't tell you um, or haven't thought about all right guys I apologize for being so sweaty um, I didn't tell my woman that I bought more car parts just kidding um, I just got out of the gym so uh, I wanted to film this video on my way home and if uh, if you guys could please just leave a like comment subscribe for me it really helps out um, lets me uh lets me know that y'all want to see some more content but uh yeah if you have any ideas also just comment them down below i'd be happy to hear uh hear some different ideas that you guys would like to hear so yeah well thanks for watching